Just a few minutes after five, so I'll go ahead and call our regular monthly meeting of the Hartford City Council to order at this time. I'm going to ask Brother David if you'll please in a prayer. Let us bow our heads. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this night. We thank you for this business meeting we've been coming through. We thank you for the city councils and the mayor of the night, Lord, and all officials the night, Lord. We ask you to just be in the midst and you said in all things get an understanding and Lord we come the night to get an understanding and keep our nation under your watch in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. okay um, according to our schedule we were supposed to hear from uh, the charter communications representative he's not here uh, we'll introduce uh, Jim Askins who was uh, and let him explain what he's here about so that y'all can have a little understanding about his purpose. All right. Jim. All right, Mayor, thank you. I appreciate it. How many of y'all have heard of the Kentucky Wire Project? Okay, so a couple of you of you anyway. That's who I'm with. Uh, the Kentucky Wire Project began under Governor Bashir. It's continuing under Governor Bevan. And... Uh, they uh, created the Kentucky Communications Network Authority. That's who uh, our uh, contract is, is with. <clears throat> I'm, I'm on the private side of it, and um, we are the Design Build LLC. We're comprised of Black and Beach and Legcorp. And uh, Legcorp is a company I work for. We have the 30 year maintenance agreement on the project. <clears throat> Uh, the Kentucky Wire Project is building a fiber uh, optic cable infrastructure in all 120 counties. <clears throat> it is the largest P3 telecom project in the country, and uh, it's approximately 1,100 sites, about 3,400 miles of cable. <clears throat> Has about uh, it's it's 85 percent aerial, 15 percent underground is. Uh, <clears throat> what the uh, construction is. Uh, one thing I always want to make sure that everybody understands is that it's called a middle mile project. We don't take it to homes and businesses. <coughs> the Kentucky uh, or the KCNA determines where we take it to in each community. And, and I'll get to those sites here in a little bit. But uh, <coughs> that's what they are uh, KCNA determines where we take it to the state does. So half of it is for the state project, the other half is for what's called an open access network. <clears throat> and what that means is, is that any local pr uh, private, public, or partnerships, either existing or new, internet service providers will be able to connect to the network and extend services locally. So half of it is for that state network that the state's connecting to, the other half is for this open access side of it. So the KCNA determines uh, what government sites are connected in each community. And then, like I said, half of it's for that, half of it's, half of it's for the state, half of it's for that open access. So when it goes into a community, you know, we'll be coming down to the 231. Each community then decides, we build a main highway, and then each community decides where they want to take it. And you mentioned Charter a while ago. If Charter wanted to use the infrastructure, if people in this room wanted to start a business, they could do that. To be able to plug into it and start distributing it uh, out in the county or in the community. <clears throat> One thing that, that's really important about it, that, that and you all understand it, is economic development. Because when you're talking about high-speed broadband access, and you're talking about it's just as important as transportation, electricity, water, anything like that. I mean, it's part of the, the vital and, and you know the, the essential infrastructure anymore for uh, for uh, economic development. So when you're doing that, then you're talking about being able to create new businesses, expand existing businesses. One thing that I found from a lot of different uh, the counties that I've traveled to, there's a lot of people that have businesses from home that work from home. 
and you know are able to make good livings from it. Some of them do it part time, some of them do it full time, and actually you know six figure businesses. But that's an opportunity also that can be used for. Another thing too is uh, the uh, increase the real estate marketability. So when you're talking about, especially like in Ohio County, I'm from Davis County. I lived in Ohio County 14 years, and you know a lot of people. You know, we'll work in, in Owensboro or something like that. They want the quality of life that Ohio County has. So, also, so when people are even outside of Owensboro, other people from other areas moving into the area looking for, you know, they have to have high, be, high speed broadband access to be able to do some of the work that they do. Uh, another thing is education. We homeschool, we have video based curriculum that we use, but you know, your public schools also have uh, video based. You know, things that they do as well and things like that. And even uh, you can get your bachelor's, master's, and even doctorate degrees online anymore. But you need that high speed capacity to be able to do the classes that, that, that are offered. Uh, another thing that, especially in rural communities, you're talking about improving health care, telemedicine, even teledentistry. I know one of the things I came across last year in Union County, they got a teledentistry grant. So now they're doing even, even dental work, or not work, but the, the being able to look at the, uh, you know, people's uh, dental work and everything online and stuff. So I always thought that was kind of neat the way they did it. Of course, agriculture is as important as it is in Ohio County and other areas. They improve the government service delivery, and part of it, what it is, you know, I mentioned the two parts of the, of the network. The state spends about 28 or $29 million a year to other third-party vendors to provide service, so maybe they won't have to do that. That money that they used to spend will be used to pay for this project and be able to keep up and, and maintain it as well as it goes along. This is something too, you know, I mentioned we had a 30-year maintenance agreement on it, on it. This is not going to be, this is not going to go by the wayside in a year or two. This is something that's state-of-the-art that's going to be around for decades to come. Uh, the state's divided into six rings, 1A through 5. Ohio County's in ring 4. Ring 4 goes from I-65 all the way to the Mississippi River. So it's by far the largest ring in the network. And one of the things, and, and, and I was happy to tell the mayor about it last time we visited, but we've opened an office here in Hartford as, as, as our base of operations to uh, do the construction for Ring 4. And it's down in the old Paxson and Ball with uh, David and Kathy Ball's building. They still have their construction business in there, but that's where we're at now. We've been in there since the 1st of March. We have uh, three permanently in there right now. There are more coming in, and that is our base of operations. And I think it's pretty neat that it's in Hartford. Um, the routing, I mentioned this a little while ago, but it is going to come from Davis County down 231 through downtown Hartford into Beaver Dam. So that's the routing of it. Uh, the sites that, uh, that's going to be connected in Ohio County is the circuit court clerk, the county clerk, and then the, in Beaver Dam, the Department for Community-Based Services, the Child Support Office, like Goshen Road or out West 7th or whatever it's called, out that way. Uh, the scheduled completion date for Ring 4 is October of 2020. We're doing as much as we can to accelerate that process and get it done a lot quicker than that, but that is still the, the official scheduled completion date will be October of next year. So, again, just kind of put in a nutshell, that is it in a nutshell. I can take some questions or whatever if the mayor wants to, but it's just, it's, it's, it's building that infrastructure that's so essential for today's economy and, and, and education and things like that. It's coming right through downtown Hartford and you know that's something that maybe y'all can be thinking about and planning and, and things those types of things of how you can take advantage of it because it is a it, it is very important and it is essential anymore and maybe you can do something innovative where other communities can can look at Hartford to to take advantage of this so anyway that's what it is uh, <clears throat> sorry I was a little bit late and uh, struggled there at first with my throat, but uh, anyway, if, Mayor, if you have any questions or anything. Well, you said it was going to be eight wire through Hartford until it gets out to the high school or thereabouts. The, the, the strands, what the state says, I mean, it's remarkable when you talk about this type of technology with fiber optic cable. You know, each strand is about this, this, uh, the size of a hair on your head. Yeah. And they say that they could take everything that they have currently on all their different networks and put it on two strands. 
But what's coming through Hartford is there's going to be 48 strands of, of cable or fiber coming from Owensboro. 24 is going to be for the uh, uh, state network, 24 for this open access side of it. And then when it gets to the high school, then it's going to be 24 strands from the high school on into Beaver Dam. Now, I didn't mention the high school as one of the sites because when you're talking about K-12 sites and also uh, public libraries, there's a federal program called the E-Rate program. And they receive subsidies to be able to provide high-speed broadband service, your schools and your libraries do. Those are currently under contract. Now, we're going to bring it into the library and, and take it to there to the high school. We're going to take it to the nearest pole, roll it up, and have it there for future use because the state wants to eventually secure those contracts and put the libraries and, and the K-12 sites on those as well. So it's 48 down into to high school and then 24 past that. So how many communities have you completed this in so far in Kentucky? The project statewide is, is well over 50%. Uh, 1A, the ring 1A is a golden triangle. Louisville, Lexington, Northern Kentucky. We're really getting close to completing that. There's been a lot of work done in eastern Kentucky. The segment from uh, Lexington to Somerset is, is almost completed, except for a little portion up in Madison County. There's a lot. What, Ohio County is on a lateral line. The main, the main backbone is 288 strands that goes through Davis County. So I say that because there's been a lot of laterals completed over in eastern Kentucky as well. But, you know, we're, we're well over 50%, probably closer to 60% than 50% completed this time. Have you seen a lot of rural communities do, like, their own um, their own municipal broadband op options? Are you seeing more public-private partnerships, or what do you There's, see? I haven't seen any public-private partnerships yet. There's a lot of talk. Uh, I live in Oldham County now. Oldham County actually purchased 144 additional strands. There's been several communities do that. One of the things is that the pricing has not been set yet for the wholesale part of it, on the open access side of it. So, so you're going to be done 2020, but no... If a commu Well, it'll be done by then. I mean, the pricing, because they're working on that now, but, you know, how do you really plan to if you don't know how much it's going to cost you? But there's a... If you draw a line from Maysville to Bowling Green, basically, west of that is the territory that I cover, and there's a lot of communities. Gallatin County actually has their own county service right now. It's a wireless service that they provide. Uh, but there's others that are talking about it, that, that are doing things. Williamstown and Grant, Grant County, they have their own municipal service. Of course, OMU does in Owensboro. Uh, off the top of my head, there's there's a, a organization of, of, of uh, municipality or municipally owned uh, uh, networks or utilities like Madisonville, Paducah, Princeton. It's called MuniNet, and a lot of those have it as well. And they're looking that when this is completed, that the, hopefully that will enhance it. Even Q Wireless with with Connect Grad. I know I was with them last year, one of their representatives in Rosine, when we had something over there with Grad, and he talked about that wherever they have antennas, and they may even install more, but they're, gonna, they're looking to see how they're going to be able to tap into this to be able to increase speed, capacity, those types of things as well. Might make them a little more palatable around here. Yeah. I mean, we, I, when, 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 they, when it began, we had a farm up around Dundee, and we ran a, a business out of there, and we, we went from dial-up to that, and we were pulling down about three or four megs, which was fine at the time, but you didn't have all the streaming and all that that goes on now. But I do know, I have talked to other people that have, uh, like some of them in Hancock County, some other places where they are on Connect Grad and where they have upgraded their equipment, they're able to do more streaming and those types of things with the connected uh, with the, the improved or the, the new equipment. And that's what it's going to be on this, is that the equipment is going to be the one that's going to limit on, on what you're going to be able to do because the network itself, it's a 100 gig backbone. Uh, going into the different sites, it's a 1 gig line that's going into it. There's no community colleges or universities here, but they have 10 gig lines going into it. So you're talking about a very robust network that's going to be able to handle anything that, that for right now, we're going to be able to throw at it.
keep in mind, you know, you have a hospital here locally in town. They're also in the middle of building a surgical care center. They're doing a lot of the online medication stuff too, so it'll be. And, and, and you can, it, it can either be, you can install your own fiber optic cable, of course. Uh, you know, there's a wireless technology that continues to improve, like I, I, I somewhat mentioned. Uh, I was in Washington County Tuesday, Tuesday, and there's a, a small family company there that's really looking forward to this being completed in that area because they see what they're going to be able to do to, again, increase capacity and, and speeds and things. So are you the contact person for the, if the community is interested in looking at taking advantage of some of the 24? I can pass it along to the, pe to the people and, and to the correct ones. Uh, and, and if y'all are, and you know, I mean, I'm not here selling anything. I'm not here to look for anything like that. But if you are interested, and it doesn't have to be even, a, you know, a plan right now. But if you are, those are some of the things that we, that the people need to know, we need to know to be able to start maybe drawing up some pricing uh, plans and things like that. So if y'all are interested, just even that, you know, what's one thing a lot of communities are doing is actually putting together like a, a committee, a broadband committee. And exploring, you know, what what are our resources? You know, what 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 are we going to be able to do? Is there anybody in the local community that has any expertise in this? So, you know, if y'all are thinking about doing that, then you know, let me know, and I, and I can pass the information along. And I can also, I do have a PowerPoint presentation. You know, I'd be happy to come if y'all do form a committee or anything to come and address those as well and answer some questions, any of those types of things. I don't get a vote, but I say yes. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any more questions or comments? Can you run it out to my house tonight? <laughs> <laughs> There's a. I mean, that's what everybody wanted, you know. And, and I saw uh, Congressman Guthrie last week in, in uh, Hodgenville, uh, uh, Lincoln Trail had had their annual meeting there, and, and even with uh, Sandy Simpson from. Uh, from a, a, a Congressman Comer's office, but they, they talk about all the time, both of those, that's, if it's not their biggest issue, it's right up there because everybody wants rural broadband. They need it anymore, right. like we've been talking about. So, you know, start you up a business. Oh, Turn okay. it out there. I'm right talking to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked it over. <laughs> so. Anything else from anybody? Hey, Mr. Askins, we appreciate you coming by and thank you for your information. And, uh, we'll look at. Yeah, please do, and you have my contact information. Sure. And if, if I'm not, and I'm not down there very often, but somebody's down there usually, so feel free to stop by or give me a call anytime. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Benjamin, uh, yes, sir. We've we didn't wait for you, so. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. I apologize for being late. You can go ahead and talk to us. This is uh, Benjamin Gisellis about uh, charter communications. Yeah. Um, thank you all so much. And again, I am sorry for being late. Um, we can trust technology only so far, but GPS failing on the way down. I thought I had to figure it out. <laughs> um, I reached out uh, to the city not too long ago about our franchise agreement. Our franchise is what um, basically the foundational agreement that allows us to be in the rights of way to serve our network. Um, it's, it's past its expiration date. That's not a huge deal. It just continues on a month-to-month -month basis, but we like to keep them up to date to reflect modern laws and times and all that. Um, I spoke with Ms. Ward. Is that you? Mm -hmm. Okay. thought so. Um, and she recommended me coming down here to answer any questions. Uh, we talked a lot about the franchise fee, which is a more complicated issue than it should be. Um, but basically, long story short, or as short as I can, we used to pay fees directly to cities and counties. In 2005, the state legislature changed that so that we just pay a telecom tax. And then the state collects that, takes their cut, and gives it back to the municipalities. Um, was that last year or the year before? My years have run together now. The Supreme Court reversed that in part and said basically cities have the option now to, to stay in the telecom tax structure or to switch back to getting fees directly from us. If you're in the telecom tax structure, you are basically getting our 5% or 3% or whatever you signed up for in your original agreement of our 2005 revenues. So if revenues have gone up or down in your community, that would change. If you were franchise fees, you would get whatever our current revenues are. 
So I ran the numbers for Hartford, and I believe um, Hartford was getting a little under 10000 a year. About 8900 I think. Oh, 8900 okay. I was thinking it was around nine something like that. Um, and I believe, I'll double check these numbers, but I believe under a franchise fee, using an estimate of our last couple uh, quarters of revenue, it would be in the 17,000 range. So it would be an increase um, if you had switched to franchise fees. Um, there are other things in there, insurance and indemnification for the city for any work that we're doing in the rights of way while we're working on the network. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have about the agreement or about our service in general. Do you have any comments about, about the contract? Just to kind of bring everyone up to speed, when we first spoke about this, Lisa and had gone through the uh, records. We couldn't find an original right. franchise agreement at all, so we thought this was brand new. But uh, because it did fall out of date, that's why you all passed that agreement to bid out the contract, which will actually come up next month, right before next month's meeting. Right. Um, but I asked Mr. Yacellis if he'd come along because you all have been provided a copy of the proposed contract as it is now. I wanted you all to have a chance to kind of review it, see if you had any specific questions because it is a little more detailed that he could answer rather than us go back and forth through emails. So who pays for playing the lines to customers? Um, <coughs> we we do to a certain extent. You start talking I assume based on the previous conversation you're talking about more rural buildings. Right. That is I oh, know just within town here. Oh, within town. If they're within our service area, we we extend service to their house. Well, and they want to sign up for our service, we will we will do the extension there. Now if you sit if, if the house sits, you know, five hundred feet or more off the road, there might be a cost involved with that. Or, or if we're ha if, if we're having to go further down a, a more rural area, there could be cost involved. Yeah. And that's where okay. it gets a significant cost. But within the city, um, we will we'll sign up any customers that, that, that want to join. Yeah. Now you say that within the city, but under 6A, under the franchise agreement, it doesn't necessarily say that you'll do it with anyone within the city. It just says where you're currently at. So can that be modified to say if they are annexed into the city that it, they could be a serviceable customer? Yeah, we could, I'm, I'm sure there's some language we can put there. I think we put that language because I'm pretty sure we're <coughs> mostly built out in the city already. Um, but I'm sure there's some annexation language that we could put in there for any new areas that the city might annex. And I bring that up for you all just to kind of understand, obviously, you know, broadband and access to the Internet is such a huge issue. Yes. Um, that'd be something I think your constituents would appreciate. Mm -hmm. And we serve most of the surrounding areas, or a lot of the surrounding areas around here, too. Um, when you get out into the county, that's where you're, I mean, you're going to run into things where it's just so expensive to build that out. That we have you know, different other things that we can try to do. Sometimes it's just, it's just not economically feasible. Um, we've put things in agreements in the past that would say, like, anywhere where there were 25 homes per square per mile of a road we would build out there. I don't know that something like that would be necessary with the city, but that's a lot of a lot of times we do things like that in counties or more rural areas. We're also this is, doesn't really have anything to do with the franchise, but I just want to let you know since rural broadband came up, we are uh, testing a new technology. We tested it last year in like kind of the outer Lexington area, um, where it's it's basically a wireless solution. So. You would put, like the way we tested it was, there was this small hotel kind of on the outskirts of a rural area. And we were able to put a small tower, not, not a big you know, cell phone tower, but a you know, 10 foot tower or less, on that building and cast about a five mile radius of internet service. Where you, like the, the actual homes, it wasn't like wireless internet service, it was dedicated to your home. And they were able to get 25 meg or more service for several homes on, in that radius. Whereas, to, you know, to build out fiber, uh, our traditional quarter fiber, out to a home like that, it's going to often cost tens of thousands of dollars to go five miles. Um, this is something we're testing. It's kind of in the hands of the FCC in terms of what they do with, it has to do with the spectrum that the wireless travels on and all that, but it's something we're looking at because rural broadband is something that we 
we fight all over the country because it's, it's something, you know, we obviously want to have as many customers as possible. There's just some over that it's really hard to reach right now. So we're not like just kind of an interesting coincidence that you're both here the same night, but I am. <laughs> I'm a little curious about the Kentucky Wired Project and someone like Charter Spectrum coming through. Would they be able to buy off the Wired Project, any of those strands? Again, those details haven't been finalized. But basically, any ISP, uh, the plan is to be able to, to use this infrastructure if they deem so. I mean, your Spectrums, ATTs normally have their own infrastructure, but having to go through an area. Well, the reason I ask is because, with all due respect, I mean, you all have all the buying power, theoretically, as a, as a major corporation. And if you come through a small municipality and you've already got your backbone, if they're just trying to buy out the competition, is there going to be any protections or anything like that for small towns that are trying to kind of open All up those the things have been looked at and, 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 and thought about and things, and there will be things, I'm sure, in place that, I mean, because, you know, part of that, that open access side of it is to encourage competition, to help the rural areas be able to have access to it. So, you know, all those things have been discussed and looked at and planned for. And, you know, I don't have the details, but yeah, all those things have definitely been thought about. I know I haven't been part of the conversation, but I know early on, a couple of years ago, our teams were in talks with Kentucky Wire about potential ways we could partner with you. But like you said, a lot of times our service runs along the same route, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to attach on there when we can just attach on to our own. Uh, but definitely, if there are opportunities, we're interested. And we do have, you know, we work with a lot of third-party entities all around the state. You know, I mentioned MuniNet, you got East Kentucky Network, you got Bluegrass Network, the bother with Brandenburg Telephone and, and South Central Telephone. And, I mean, there's a lot of them that, that you know, we've worked with and, and, and have continued to work with. So. I'll just ask the council, this is probably something that uh, Mr. Ecellis and I are probably going to go back and forth on a, on a couple of the details and then his proposed agreement before the final bids are due. Do you all have anything specific that you have questions on in the current proposal? <laughs> and I will say that this is a little bit more detailed than the one that you provided so it, it does have a little bit more protection for the city the indemnification I think of yeah nice. <laughs> so. so just to give a little background I, I've been around since uh, why well, I live in the Louisville area and I was I worked with insight with the people provided then and then it became time more cable which purchased all of this area as well uh, and now it's chartered when I, under Time Warner Cable, they, they didn't really address these franchises as much. They just felt like they're going to keep rolling. It's not, you know, it's not like just because it expires, we're leaving town or you are going to kick us out or anything. Um, since Charter came in, they've been much more interested in getting more engaged with the local, at the local level, making sure these are up to date and more reflective of, of current laws and, and getting more involved with communities we serve, so. which I think is a good thing. Anything else from anybody? Uh, any questions? No questions right now. So we appreciate you. I'll be in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there anyone else that wishes to speak? We do. Thank you. <laughs> we, we don't have anything to do about, you know, high speed anything, but <laughs> we're, we're kind of laid back and slow ourselves. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about parking, okay. and I know it's a big issue and everything, but um, we are going to be renting a big building right here on Main Street, and parking is going to be an issue when we open. Um, I understand we have two-hour parking already on 231, okay? I'm also going to say this is nicely as I can. I don't know that it's patrolled very often. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, this is an opportunity for the city. If it's patrolled and tickets are written, you guys benefit. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking maybe if we can kind of nudge a little and say, can it be patrolled? You know? Um, I know my sister-in-law went to Henderson the other day. She parked in front of a business. Well, the courthouse. Uh-huh. 
And I mean, as soon as she parked, there was a little lady in one of those little bitty cars, little the smallest car I've ever seen. I wouldn't have been able to fit in it. And she was right behind me, seeing where. And there was actually an article in the paper this morning about chalk and tires in Owensboro. Yeah, it's against the law now. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah. So she took so the they're picture. On the so you've got a time stamp. What do you suggest? An act or something? Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm like, talk. Why is that messing anybody up? But, but I mean, I, she was right on it. And actually, the sign. I thought I was safe because I'm like, there's not a sign. Well, I got out, and the sign was laying on the ground where oh, it said two hours, which I wasn't going to be there. But she was on it. Like when I was driving around, mm -hmm. she was driving around doing people, and then when she saw me park, she was right behind me. But also, we would like for you to consider Maggie also doing two-hour parking on West Center Street. We also know there's a new business going in where Sweet Dumplings was, and they're going to need, you know, park parking there also. Um, the only other thing we'd like for you to consider, I know this is a lot here, <laughs> but uh, right here on the corner of 231 and Center Street. We're wondering, is there any way maybe we could do one space as a 15-minute load and unload spot? Because we are going to have dry cleaning and we are going to have UPS shipping. And if somebody's just there for that, run in and out. You know, I hate for somebody, especially if they're carrying big boxes or if they're carrying a lot of clothes, I would think for them to have to go, you know, all the way from the back block there up here. We agreed to put two 15 minutes down in front of when Sweetie Dumplings was there for his benefit, you know, so I don't think it'd be a problem for us to pass from one. You know, I mean, if there. we could just get one slot, that would that would be great. But we do want you to consider the other about a two-hour parking this way and maybe having some... I think that's, on our, that's on our agenda for tonight, so... Okay. okay. <laughs> so that's that's all we're asking. <laughs> no. That's what we're going to consider. All right. Okay. Oh, well, well, that was that boy signed to just park where they want to. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, and we're not even asking for it. It could be like from 10 to 4, something like that, because we do have tenants that live, yeah. you know, in several places above the business that's along Main Street. And so, you know, if it's like, seven o'clock at night till nine in the morning. I don't mind them parking there because it's right there in front of their home. But, you know, during business hours, I know all of us would like for them to have another place to park right. instead of being there all the time. But, you know, any time after or before then, I think you can, it doesn't yeah. matter how long. Two hours, you can get what either shopping, your hair done. I mean, you can already make it. Yeah, you get everything done. You can buy everything. Yeah. I thought y'all were going to try to come up with some kind of proposal or something. We have the same thing. I'm going to want to put in that. 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 I mean, I just said right now we have a great opportunity. We've got businesses coming in. Businesses are interested in coming to Hartford. We've got, you know, new businesses yeah. starting in Hartford. So I just think this would be a great opportunity to say, you know, well, the city is working with us. We have right. to get things going. And we truly are. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why we're here. We're just trying to encourage you. We well, just come back and encourage any time. You're an easy encouragement. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. You don't have to say if you don't want to. You're very welcome. Okay. Sorry, I was like, I'm working this week. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> I'm out of practice for working. All right, uh, we'll take a look at our minutes from our last meeting, um, the March 28th meeting. Give you a second to look over those, see if there's any corrections or additions or deletions that need to be made.
questions about anything or I will tell you we've already had to use part of that garbage van that we bought up north and brought down here. We've already had to use part of it, so it's a good thing that we had it. Right. <laughs> they got the major major part of it to be used yet. Hopefully it will, we'll have to use it very soon. If there are no questions or comments or anything, I'll like entertain a motion to accept the reading of the minutes. Make a motion. All right, I'll second. second. All right, any discussion? All in favor, up in hand. Uh, Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Terry, you got anything for us tonight? Uh, I'll update you on where we're at on our resolution regarding the omitted property out by the parkway, all that's sent to the state. Uh, they requested a larger plat, which I believe has been mailed out, but I think otherwise everything seemed to be in order, so hopefully that'll get that resolved. I'll make a comment regarding that um, franchise agreement with Spectrum, and clearly y'all can't award anything until the bids are opened. Uh, historically, though, there's only ever been one bid, uh, and you do have a proposal. One of the reasons I brought that up about offering service in the annexed area is we have talked about around this table is what you can do as Hartford is you're somewhat limited and what are the options and what are the opportunities to convince people they want to be annexed in and one of those reasons could be is if we can get Spectrum to agree that they'll provide service inside city limits you know that's going to be very uh, it's going to be very Water advertising line, well one we come in for one thing uh, I mean problems Kathy used to have there. You had issues where you're living, I, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So if it's okay with you all, if you have any suggestions, I'm, I'm happy to try and communicate with them, see what we can work out on that. But keep that in mind over the next week or so and let me know if you have any other thoughts on that agreement. Um, I do have I do have a matter I'd like to go into closed session regarding potential litigation, but I can wait till the end if you prefer. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a look at our financial statements if you see if you have any questions the account balances uh, the statements about the various departments the checks uh, anything that you have any questions about there I have a question but I can't find any example right now and I noticed that some of the expenditures is the bank fee? Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what, the, what, what bank fees do we pay. Anytime we send out ACH, they charge us, which means for collecting our water or paying our employees. We also have bank fees for anytime there's a return check, they charge us, and we in turn then we charge mm -hmm. citizens. Um, but um, like we had one this week where uh, the account was closed on this particular individual and the bank charges us. <laughs> Do we need another bank? <laughs> if you have that fee on that account that's frozen, get with me. Jeez. I think I know what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, the the problem there. with that one was was because of the, the example uh, of like I, Randy's I don't get around the so. bill. <laughs> Who's bill is Randy? Uh, Just get with me. I just, like I said, I can't find one now and I didn't mark it. But I thought, why are we paying a bank? We always have. It's $10. If every somebody day. gives you a cold check, they charge us. Well, I didn't know that. Hmm. If somebody gives me a cold check, are they going to charge me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that'll teach me to take my yeah. You can turn that into the county. Cash only at my yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> we have had to do that because we've had right. a few uh, that had ACHs. Their ACHs bounce, their checks bounce, and it's the same people over and over and over to the point that it's like, okay, some money order and cash only. You can turn in cold checks to the county attorney's mm -hmm. office, though, for prosecution if it gets to an extreme. Mm -hmm. We charge fifty dollars for a return check. Oh, you have to charge hundred. <laughs> no. 
Barely damn 50 now. Unless they shut your water off, too. Okay. Any more questions or discussion about the accounts? No, and I went through this thing for a moment. See, that's why I found the bank key. Right. Shouldn't turn me loose there. Yeah. Okay, if there's nothing else, then I entertain a motion that we accept the financial reports. Yes. Second. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, up your hand. Thank you. Motion to carry. All right. Uh, old business, what we have is the second reading of 2019-01. If somebody will read the top part of that. I'll read it. In ordinance to close a portion of an unnamed alley located south of Taylor Avenue in Block 0 or Block O of the East Hartford edition. Okay. All right. Uh, this is second reading for that. We need a motion to accept this uh, ordinance. I'll make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? All right. Any discussion to this motion to accept this ordinance? Adopt it. Everybody knows what we're talking about, this right? This is the one they already put up Probably. To. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> all right, if there's none, all in favor of adopting this ordinance, uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion's carried. All right. Uh, let's get into our new business tonight. Uh, the first item of business is Code Enforcement Board. Uh, I want to recommend Robbie Coppage as the third member of uh, Code, Code Enforcement Board to serve on that. Board. Any motion to accept that? I make a motion. All right. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. Any discussion regarding that? I like Robbie. Well, hey, probably I'm doing a pretty good job. Our code for the board is it doesn't meet because nobody ever contests the uh, citations or anything. Yeah. Um, I will say in a, in a related topic, uh, we have addressed the issue up on 530 Frederick Street to some degree. <laughs> we'll see you in a month. Uh, we hauled away 4.16 tons of Good. merchandise. Just keep running up the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your neighbor there? Yeah. Yeah. What we were talking about the other day? Yeah. So yep. we have addressed it. They are receiving the bill in the mail, and I'm going to look for to pay it. So I think that gives us a lien and gives us an avenue to address the issue. But anyway, all in favor of accepting Robbie, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, you have a change order in your packet. Um, Starts out, starts out looking something like this, okay. and then behind that are some pictures to uh, back up the change order. What you're going to see are pictures of what they discovered when they ripped up the old sidewalk. Every one of the buildings on the, in that block of Main Street had at least one pole chute opening into the basement. It was unexpected. Uh, the one in front of Capers extends over much of the opening in front of Capers. It was actually two. two uh, and they had to come up with a strategy of how to support the concrete that they poured. Uh, those items that you see there, item number one, uh, type B sidewalk at Division B, station 7 point f f plus 5 5. I believe that is the uh, sidewalk in front of uh, Brandon Thompson Station. 
the sidewalk there had to be adjusted. Um, then number two, the uh, concrete decking over the void spaces and three, stone and concrete in the small void spaces. What they had to do was they had to put plywood down, fill it up with rock, you know, in the small places, the one in front of Capers. And that must be, that's the, well, that's the number one. It's not Brandon Thomas. That's the one in front of Capers. Okay, these are all that same issue. Uh, anyway, that total the additional came to $5,054.42. So um, I'm asking for approval of this change order so that uh, they, they can proceed last week. <laughs> the first day they done done. They? <laughs> yeah. If y'all don't do that, I'd pay for it out of my pocket. So <laughs> I'm begging for a motion. <laughs> How much you get? Oh, oh, Thank you, David. <laughs> yes, sir. I seen what they had to do. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Is there a you second? Know, the river to the this guy yes. might have warranted an emergency. There you go. <laughs> okay. Wonder if somebody didn't fall. Discussion to this motion. I will say that the big rain that we had created some problems with some of our basements in those buildings there um, and uh, we feel like that well right now we've got to cover it up with plastic until they can fill the the flower boxes with with the dirt and we can get the brick and the sand in the areas in between and that should uh, take care of most of that but what we had actually was bathtubs or swimming pools that was collecting water and found it into those basements and uh, didn't it do any major damage? I mean was well, it anything? I don't know how to have to talk to, talk to, talk to. <laughs> we, we lost some stuff that we had stored oh. down there but nothing wow. nothing major but uh, most of it was up on pallets but yeah, there was yeah. some stuff okay. on the floor. Yeah. but primarily it's just going to be fine. cleaned up right now I would think we caught it kind of early but I, I had about a half inch to an inch of rain water standing down wow. there Yeah, basements will do for you. It created quite a stir on Saturday morning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, we've had the engineer in to look at it with us with the superintendent project and feel confident that uh, it won't happen again. You know, right now they're covered over with plastic until they can't address it. Right. Anyway, all in favor of this change order with the uplifted hand. Okay, thank you. Especially since we've already got it done. All right. Um, the next thing we have is our budget for proposed budget. And you see that ordinance on, on the page right after the change order information. Basically, what happens is what you see in your financial reports we go through and estimate each line item and total it up what we expect the revenues to be what we expect the expenditures to be and present it in this more simplified form uh, we have to publish the, our budget and this is an acceptable form to put, publish the budget in it would cost us an arm or leg if we had to put everything in yeah nine items which doesn't make much sense because people won't understand light on nine items anyway this is a general you can see uh, the proprietary funds up there the what we expect out of the water the sewer and the sanitation uh, then the general fund cemetery of course provides some income not much has some expenditures not much um, the LGEA is the Local Government Economic Act. We talked about that. And the Municipal Aid is the MRA that we've already discussed tonight. Save the Theater is a minor fund, and Occupational Tax Course is one of our great revenues. Um, I am expected to give you a budget message 
each each time. So here's a copy of my budget message to you. I will re enter it into the record. It's just nothing more than a lot of who shot John. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe stand up there and <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, let me just run down through a read real quickly for you. The City of Hartford budget for the fiscal year 2019-2020 reflects anticipated revenue and expenditure goals for that term. That's what the budget is. There are no new sources of revenue expected for the city during that time period. Uh, revenues will continue to come primarily from property taxes, occupational taxes, and insurance premium taxes. That's the three main funding sources. Proprietary funds from the sale of water, sewage usage, and sanitation will continue to defray the cost of those services. And the sale of cemetery plots is a much lesser amount of income for us. Expenditures will continue as in the past with employee payroll and benefits comprising a large portion of the expense. Employee pay is scheduled to be increased by 2% to offset the cost of living increase predicted. And the retirement cost for employees will increase by more than was previously expected. Um, this year we thought that uh, well, it was going up to 24%, wasn't it? We had heard it was going. They were going to run it up to thirty percent on us. Thirty percent of somebody's salary, in addition to what planning salary. So anyway, uh, what we heard now, twenty four. Yeah, that's what it's going to actually be this year. We had heard though thirty, and it is steadily climbing toward a goal of twenty nine point something percent. But they're just letting us do it a little bit at a time. Utility costs are usually steady unless an unexpected rate increase is imposed. Uh, repairs, maintenance, and motor fuel are unpredictable, but are based on the previous year's records. Also included in this budget is the purchase of a new police car, something we've tried to do every second year, but we haven't done it since 2016. Our, it should be our debt service at the present remains the same, but could increase. I don't know where the five came from, right? but... <laughs> With uh, our debt service at the present remains the same. We don't expect anything unless we add a new project. Which, uh, of the normal day-to-day -day operations, the only project possibly anticipated would be the modification of the Felty Road water tank. That's the big thing. The cost could possibly be paid with a short-term loan, along with a grant, and not through bond issuance. So that would be a short-term. A problem for us to pay in nothing like 30, 40 years. The fund has also started to defray the cost of a new garbage truck, but expected purchases in a few years. Uh, there are no significant changes in our program goals and appropriations levels other than what, we, what I previously cited there. So likewise, there's no need presently, and I don't know if the spell check didn't work, I guess, for any major <laughs> changes in the financial policy of the city. I did this in a hurried manner this afternoon. <laughs> I apologize for that. But anyway, try to give you an idea about where we're sitting with our budget. <coughs> Don't expect anything major to take place either in income or expenditures right now. That doesn't mean that tomorrow you know, we hit the lottery or something like that. <laughs> you know, somebody bequeath their estate to us in a will or something, you know. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Well, just remember that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. This is an ordinance that does require a first and second reading. We'll have the first reading. It has to be done before June of the year. So we're fortunate that we're this far ahead of, of our uh, Lisa's done a lot of hard work on it to get to this point, and so we bring this to you as a proposed budget. I just need someone to read uh, the very top part of it there.
Okay. You go ahead. Ordinance 2019-02. The ordinance adopting the city of Hartford annual budget for fiscal year July 1st, 2019 through June the 30th, 2020. By estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. That's good. That'll work. And then unless something happens, we'll read, uh, have a second reading at our next meeting. And uh, if you have any questions about the budget or anything like that, between now and then would be an ideal time to, to look at the calculations. All right. Okay. Uh, next is uh, Center Street Parking. Um, because our parking is so limited and much of Center Street, especially West Center Street, is taken up with uh, the vehicles of people who are working in uh, businesses along there. We're asking, uh, it was been suggested that we uh, limit parking on West Center Street to a two hour minimum. Now, with the what you read in the paper today about the illegality of chomping cars and things like that, we're going to have to work something out and do a better job of policing it. But uh, it may require us hiring somebody part time, you know, two people part time, something like that, in order to uh, monitor the parking. But. Um, and what they were asking is if we would consider uh, limiting parking on West Center Street to two-hour parking. So uh, I would entertain a motion and a second, and then we would discuss. It's right on that side of the courthouse, right? Well, that's East, that's East Center, okay. across 231, okay. that part of the old post office down in okay. part of town is what we're talking about. And it, it might not hurt to look at the East Center as well. Sure would. No, you can't argue it through there. You can't, that's right. Especially once they tear down these two buildings over here on the corner, that's going to create additional parking Bless you. for uh, people who work in the courthouse or in this courthouse block area. The two buildings are due to be torn down in about two to three weeks. Uh, and what that would mean is that it will be graveled or paved and put into a, make it into a parking lot and it will take a lot of this pressure off of the people who work here in the courthouse, especially parking around the courthouse. So it should open up East Center Street. But, but uh, there's not too many. That wasn't me. <laughs> Mine's on. That be mine. I don't know why. That's I got an email or something. But, uh, you know, if you want to make East Center Street two hour parking, too, as well as West Center Street, uh, I think we should. Just make I really it. do. Okay, from, from Apple Alley down. down. On both sides. Okay. How long two will blocks it be? Band there. How long will it be before they uh, tear down this other for the ones that's parking over there now? Well, it's going to be about three weeks before the contractor can come in to tear that down. The county is the one who's right. contracting that business. But they will allow us, you know, to use that for city parking as well as county park. Right. Um, and then after it's torn down, you know, some preparation, they'll probably grab them for a while before they try to pave it. And so, uh, hopefully, in a month, we should be able to tell a difference in the parking. Well, I know some of the women park over there on that side, works in the courthouse, and it, the yeah. walking form and yeah. stuff. Well, there's so, not a whole lot of parking, you know. That's no, what I, I think know. Parker's not blessed with. I know. I know. They <laughs> yes. park where they, and we've right. not ever said much about it, you know. Because that for that very reason, but right. I mean the community center's got parking behind, mm -hmm. you know, parking.
parking on the street over right. there, Liberty, but uh, court day is difficult to find a parking place right. around town. Right. And so that will help alleviate a lot of the problems there. And then once the construction gets done, you know, the little lot next to Capers will be oh, able to be yes. used. Uh, we're looking at another lot. We're trying to work on another lot that uh, get some kind of an agreement for like the people who right. work in the hospital building uh, yeah. can park there, be a lot closer, open up some parking on them. Uh, this may be a little premature. It may be that you want to wait until the lot's opened up. I don't know, but that's... I don't think there'd be any problem with going ahead and starting it. Okay. You'll we'll we'll have to do that. Yeah. So it'll have to be a second reading anyway. So yeah, yeah. So what you're going to do is just, uh, you know, ask her to prepare an ordinance for consideration, and then okay. uh, do you want to include the the one slot for 15 minutes right there on the corner? For, I mean, they're going to have UPS and dry cleaning. Uh, dry cleaning and drop off so you want to include that as well yes okay yes. then can I have a motion to ask her to prepare that ordinance okay second all right any more discussion regarding that ordinance I will note uh, for some of you all that are new the city a few years ago passed a uh, parking citation ordinance which uh, historically for years in cities in Kentucky a parking ticket that went to the state general fund and the municipality itself didn't get to see any of that revenue by passing that ordinance it's no longer a criminal penalty it's like a civil violation with a fine but that money does stay here local now within okay. the city yeah. so it does it, it really does if they enforce it and whatnot it's a little bit of money in the city but primarily it's to help alleviate some of the congestion down there Remember what the penalties were in that? I think it's like 15 or 25 dollars it, it's, it's not that horrible I don't think could put in parking lead. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Probably a parking meter. <laughs> I think we mile. should and get a get a meter made. Too. Yeah, you, you make a good one. Right? <laughs> we had we had a uh, woman who went by and chalked the yeah. tires. Yes, yeah. I remember that. That was that was about well, that's about our level of ability. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then we'll have that ordinance prepared and ready at the next uh, meeting. Okay. I've also been approached by um, someone who has complaints about the, we have a noise ordinance. There is no time factor in that noise ordinance. That was their concern. They didn't mind the noise so much as when the noise was taking place. Uh, somebody would be out planing wood at six o'clock in the morning or something like that, you know. And so I would told I would bring it before the council and see if you all wanted to set some kind of a time on the noise ordinance, like uh, no noise before seven o'clock, eight o'clock, whatever, no noise after nine o'clock. What kind of noise? Ten o'clock. Uh, anything that's that's above a certain decibel level, you know, like uh, loud rock music. Uh, uh, you mean that can scream at the night? Really? Machinery. <laughs> I, I have a question. Okay. How do you measure it? Yeah. Well, that it would be up to the police department to police <laughs> us. <laughs> oh. They had to get their, their little decibel meter to. <laughs> At 6 a.m.? Well, there's supposed to be somebody on duty at 6 a.m. So. Does that include weed eaters, lawnmowers, and that type? Of right. There wouldn't be anything like uh, any kind of noise that would keep somebody from split sleeping. That was what they were Some problem. of these trucks are built to make that kind of noise. Yeah, but. You don't want your neighbor next door firing up the lawnmower at 6 o'clock in the morning. or I don't want him firing up that truck either. <laughs> <laughs> but he has to go to work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But then it's asked, could there be a time when noise was not loud? Right. You know, and, and what noise we're talking about would be the same thing that's in the noise ordinance, which mm -hmm. well, is this. But you know, that's going to be difficult, I think, in the summertime because the days are extended. And a lot of people well, do a lot say, of work. You know, but like 9, 10 o'clock at yeah. night, you know, the cutoff time, nothing after 10 o'clock. You know, okay. Nothing, be, nothing before six, seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock, whatever. Seven to ten, then. Huh? Seven to ten. I mean, seven that's what 10. that's okay. what you all have to decide. You know, what's, is that what you want to do? What's in the current ordinance right now? I'm there not is familiar nothing. with it. How old is the current ordinance? It well, he doesn't mention that. No, but how old is it? It is a. I didn't uh, say I, I'm not familiar with, with them, it. and they don't have anything related to anything like that either. Because I thought they'd be the easiest, quickest I could get a sample. They so don't have anything. We're gonna do that. We need to do it. We don't parks. We have no or no what? The we parks. Have, oh yeah. We have yeah. A young folks. Ordinance. But it well, doesn't say clock, lawnmowers. Clock. Clock. I think there's an ordinance that you can't have the lights on at the ballpark after midnight. I think is what. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it may be. Yeah. Uh, or, 11 o'clock or something like that. There is, a, you can't have the lights on at the ballpark after a certain time. They ain't doing nothing up there because, I mean, they tearing up the park. And we found needles up there and yeah. everything. I had the police come up there three times to get needles. <laughs> yeah. You know, and young folks tearing the park up. And the bad thing about it, a lot of them ain't from here. They come from other places over here because they know they can stay out there as long as they want. Yeah. <laughs> So. Are the police picking up the things? Or police or maintenance picking those up? The police come picking them up. Oh, okay, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, that's what we're, we're discussing this out so that we can come up with something that everybody thinks is reasonable okay. and acceptable to the general population. Just well, keep in mind whatever you all do, it's got to be enforceable. Right. Yeah. That, that's the issue. A decibel level is. Easy to you say. Know, I, I mean, yeah. I but I think... Uh, Ten to seven ain't bad. I mean, you know. Is this just one person that somebody's complaining about or something? Could That's where it started, about? but, you know, I think it... Does a lot of it go on? Or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. This one particular person who suggested that we consider it... Uh, been dealing with it for for chainsaws at two o'clock in the morning. Wow. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. <laughs> Chainsaw mess. Is that your neighbor again? No. <laughs> I heard it. I mean, I'm nowhere else at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I've seen all that far away, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to do something, but I, yeah. you know, so I don't, I don't know how you enforce it. That's the thing, and. Yeah. Does it become all inclusive to like any kind of power tools, any kind of motor vehicle other than a ve you know a car? Or, you know, I can try and find some similar city ordinances and maybe present you with something. You all can kind of comb through it at the next meeting if you like, um, or at least just maybe a summary of some ideas. But I think your biggest issue you're going to run into is enforcement, yeah, and, and how you define when someone actually yeah. breaks the ordinance. Yeah. It's a shame you can't say use your common sense. Or be considered of your neighbor. I know. Yeah. That's odd. That's, That's an oddity there. Right. Right. Citizens, though. Yeah, be considered right. of your neighbor. Be kind to your neighbor. Right. That would be <laughs> the common sense. But. Okay. Then we'll let her okay. look and search for some things. Um, I have a declaration of surplus property here, too. Um, I have to make this available to everybody. Uh, in order for us to 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 get rid of a uh, vehicle or anything, any kind of surplus property, we have to process that we have to go through. 
Uh, first, I have to declare it surplus. Fire Department's got a 90, 1987 Ford F-250 truck. We bought this thing used from the Forestry Department. And they equipped it to do some brush, you know, to fight brush fires with its four-wheel drive. Well, we just bought a brand new truck uh, for this station here because they also pull some equipment with it. Uh, they've got a little new TV that's got fire fighting equipment in the back. They can go out with it. Uh, this this truck here is equipped to go and fight fires too. And, but anyway, they took the older truck that we had here out to. Hoover Hill Station, and then that made this other one, you know, surplus for us. That's uh, um, the truck was originally purchased to be stationed at the Hoover Hill Station, number two. The new truck was purchased uh, served this station in fighting brush fires and towing the equipment trailer. <coughs> so the truck that was here was moved out to Hoover Hill Station, and that. Made the, uh, that one. Anyway, uh, there are several different options that we have of getting rid of surplus property, and one of those options is to either give it or sell it to another government agency. There is another fire department in Ohio County that would like to have that truck. So um, we had the truck valued at, went out to Moore's and he said that he would give us a thousand dollars on trade-in so he, <laughs> I would give you a thousand dollars for the whole truck <laughs> but anyway the equipment in the back end uh, there's a storage tank and a pump and other brush fighting equipment valued it at a thousand dollars so the other fire station has agreed to pay uh, $2,000 for this truck. I wouldn't give you $200 for it. <laughs> but anyway. Can't make a garbage truck. Are you going to back up to accept <laughs> uh, But anyway, the other fire department is willing to buy it at that price. So, I, you know, I think it's it's fair. I would like to keep it in the county. I wouldn't care if we gave it away to them. But anyway, it's just I haven't seen the current ordinance, but I'm pretty sure with a, another municipality or government entity that on the surplus property, you don't have to bid or anything like that. No, either. you so, don't. Yeah. Once right. you declare it, it should be free. Right. Yeah, that's what this purpose is, declaring the surplus so that we can do what we want to with it. Um, you need a motion on this? Yes. I make a motion to move forward with it. Move forward, yeah. Okay. I'll okay. All right. Discussion regarding the motion then. Okay, there is none. If you're in favor of doing that, I've lifted hand. Okay, motion's carried. Thank you. Rosine Fire Department will be very happy. I hope. It's still, it's still serviceable. Yeah. You know, it's still. I'm going to keep it parked in the barn and there's no dance going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. All right. Um, <coughs> I have down here discussion about uh, Fred's building. Eric, you want to address anything about Fred's building? I'm just, this is just for information you want to take any action on or anything like that. There's a, there's a uh, investor business guy interested in buying the Fred's building for the purpose of opening a uh, retail store selling different CBD based products but also making some of those products on site light uh, industry there they've been working through zoning and planning through Nancy and uh, discussion with with Tara on the uh, possibilities of opening such a business there like they're they're ready CB. Like CBD. CBD. no CBD is is uh, oils Oh, well, never yes. mind. I know what yeah. you're talking about. Oil, okay. sass, 
Oceans. CB radio. CB radio. It's a new technology. Just getting out this way. We got broadband and CB radio. That's how far behind we are. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, depending on the zoning and, and, and ordinance, um, whether they'd be allowed to do such things, uh, they're ready to pull the trigger on buying that building, making it really nice, and uh, having a new business open up in the city of Hartford. Is planning and zoning holding it up? Well, there's... <laughs> we'll if it is, we, we can take care of that tomorrow. We're going to let Nancy yeah. address that issue now. Yeah. So, Nancy, you want to talk to us about... Okay, whenever uh, we, uh, Eric and I had discussed that before, I thought possibly that we could go through having another conditional use as to how a large product could be, how much workers could be there, different things, because it's not industrial. It is a business district. So they did agree to do a conditional use, and that would have held them back. But after meeting with the gentleman, Scott Housefield, mm -hmm. um, the mayor and I met with him, and discussed it and I continued to ask him questions so I finally found out enough to feel like it's totally industrial because uh, he had said that the back of it they would even warehouse some of the product mm -hmm. uh, even because it can warehouse it wet or dry and, right and so if it's dry it can stay there if it's wet then you take it back to Katie's correct right for it to be dry okay well they would bring it dry ready to process It'd only be stored there for a couple of days. Yeah, you, you said he'd store enough product there just to continue to. Right. To, uh, uh, my understanding is from him is that that would be extracted then down to the oil uh, to the oil itself, and then mm -hmm. the oil itself would be taken back to Katie's and bottled. Sure. Correct? Okay, I'm still yeah. trying to. Yeah, it would be a light industry. It's not heavy industry. Matter of fact, I made a video of yeah, the whole process. I I yeah. heavy. You can't even hear it. Yeah, uh, unless you were doing a bottling company there, then you're going to have to say it's a heavy. Industry. Sure, yeah, but it's not. But Matter of fact, we send the, most of our stuff from Katie's to Louisville. That's not what would happen there. But what he, what I finally got him to tell me was because I said uh, we talked about five employees or something like that. Well, he said that his plans were to to uh, probably be uh, what 15 employees a shift and maybe go to three shifts. Well, you got 45 employees or something like that. Well, then you got to consider it as industrial because my book says five employees can you can have five employees and sell a product right. in a big two. Well, big three doesn't say. So the, I I can't do it under conditional use. And I told the gentleman that I had held his check. I did not cash it right because I needed to get more information right. So the only thing it could do would be. And I talked with Tara, and that's what I want to know. Is it legal to be able to just uh, do that acre and a half or whatever that is the, there? Is it light industrial? The problem Does that we have, business? yeah, the, the problem that we're running into, and, and Eric and I talked about this, is right now under our current plan, we can't spot zone, which means unless you have like type zoning surrounding it, you can't just say, okay, you're going to be one little light industry spot in front of all this business. However, we've also talked about redoing our entire plan and redoing zoning for the city and what I think that this would allow us to do is with the council's okay is once we can get that going and get that agreement signed with Brad we can start that process and maybe we can speed up this particular um, acre and a half mm -hmm. where the Fred's building is as part of that and outline exactly what our plan is for that corridor which would allow for them to move forward but at the same time it would present our goals for the rest of the city and keep us from that spot zoning issue but I think you're going to have to you're going to have to fast track the whole issue for the planning and zoning for the city at the same time. Right. But he was also talking. Excuse me. He was also talking about purchasing seven acres next to the. I think that's going to be a slightly bigger problem. I don't know that you're going to be able to justify a full industrial zoning area for right there in that area. Right. And that, if you well, do light you industry talking? with what you're discussing, it's so long right. as it's got a retail component, yeah. we could probably make that a sell. The, the, the only. The drive behind the other acres is just to keep what's in there out of there. Yeah, but he wasn't going to do anything with it. Talking about right. What, right. what did well, you I'm call talking that? about a planned unit development which takes more than five acres, and then you you, you designate this portion of it to do this and this portion of it to do that, and, and you know uh, plan ahead. Well, 
I think that if you're talking to Cheryl, we don't really want to do that. We just want to work with that one lot right, right mm -hmm. now. Right. Because we want to make sure that we can get employees in there. Correct. I can't, but I can't say that it's not industrial. It is. With but, that much going on, I just can't. But I do think that the city is going to have to, and Beaver Dam too, get Nancy the okay so that we can start working with Brad and get this on a right. fast track. Because the ordinance is from the 1991 ordinance that combined Beaver Dam and Hartford. Right. And it hasn't been anything done with it except for Beaver Dam's excelled and we have. Uh, this Scott is actually an acquaintance of one of my acquaintances that looked to us to see if there might be a facility that he's interested in because he's interested in opening a bunch of them. Hmm. And, and this is one of many. And that's why I brought it here, because this is a great opportunity to uh, bring some industry into the city. I had experience in this. This, this isn't my thing. Like I said, I don't, I don't have any skin in this. I was just trying to marry two people up, Harper and industry, to, for this person. Uh, but the, the company I work for isn't affiliated with them at all. I'm just here because I'm local. This guy's up in Indianapolis. But he did come down and look at our giant facility down in, in Katy's, Kentucky. And so this would be a, a very, it, it, it's not even a tenth of the size that he wants to do. Mainly because I've had a lot of farmers contacting me from this area, Ohio County, McLean County, uh, Grayson County, all these areas since the farm bill was, was uh, passed in January to get into that industry. The problem is, is we're still building data on that, and so nobody wants to jump in it head first. They want to grow one, two, five, ten, twenty acres of, of product, and uh, they'll have to take it 90 miles to Western Kentucky to get their money. It's not really beneficiary. So this place would afford our farmers around here to profit in, in the industry and take it to Fred's. We can take it from there. That's not a, that's not an issue. And and one of the questions concerns was during harvest, how many trucks can you expect to to bring in? It is nothing like when you see the trucks line up for the corn and the beans. It is n not near that scale. Matter of fact, the facility and threads would probably only handle box van size during harvest, during the main harvest. One of his growers is actually out of southern Illinois because since the farm bill, th th this is a product that can cross state lines. They treat it just like corn and beans and any other commodity. Matter of fact, the, the business will probably go public later on in the summertime. But uh, they're, they're going to open it somewhere, and he has the money to buy it. They've already reached an agreement on that. Like and that thing here. can be operational by harvest. It can be operational by harvest. He would get his business license from, from Hartford and start... Um, so I think where you all are right now is, like Nancy said, within our current rules, we're kind of tied, but I think we can fast track the zoning issue if you move forward with the city plan that we had originally proposed to work with Grad. But what that's going to take is going to have to take an approval from this council so that she can get over to Grad and get that started. Well, uh, can, can we, uh, you said, can we let them open under the condition that it would be done later because they want to do something, not want to. Yeah. Well, if, if we could probably do can't a conditional, do something like that? I, I wonder if we can't do a conditional with uh, with the initial operation like they were talking because you and said originally starting with a retail. If they're going to have a small setup, they are going to do the retail. I did explain that, and yes, there's no problem. It will be retail on the front. Yes, I mean, yes. But it would be yeah, you know, in the back. Out there and, uh, and, uh, I said, what's the difference in having micro? Would they be willing to build a new building? They're wanting to be and able to take in I mean, go ahead later, the bigger but they want to this it, 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 it get done now. We got I think when they build up, it definitely gets out of it. But it's in the beginning, they're yeah, talking about a small footprint. I think that's a the conditional at this time. Which I understand. Is that the long term is going to be a part of the zoning plan. Yeah. Well, sir. I think you could write up the conditions or something. I'll give you want to call her. This is a multi million dollar. Well, then we want to go ahead with Deal. the conditional instead yeah. of rezone. Yeah, I think, and then... But I still think you will need to approve so we can get the other going, because so, right. it will have to be rezoned. Well, if he's got future. money to buy the building, buy the building, we might as well go ahead and well, say... Well, if you don't, you've got Fred sitting there and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's right. right. And he's already right. had a deep, you know, how the, it's going to be a nice place. It's not just going to continue to crumble and leak. It already needs... Yeah. 
considerable repair because it's been empty for this long. Yeah, but and I know we've but I know we've generated point. discussion about the zoning issue. Right. I think we're at a point now where you all need to get her the official okay to do this. Well, what about Beaver Dam? Are they willing to? Do they want to come up with their money? To well, what I was going to say is I talked with uh, Jennifer Alley yesterday. We were working on that yeah. and stuff like that. Well, they've got to stand still until we get as far as the conference plan. See, I can work this in with the comp plan that we've got now because it says there's changes that come about. Right. That's why I was asking her if we couldn't do a conditional uh, like a stating this is why we can do it. Because yeah. that's what your comp plan does. It tells you why you can do something, why you want it in the future, or you don't. Yeah. And so you back off. But uh, their grant right now is just waiting for us to come to the terms as who's going to pay what and do. Well, has right. Beaver Dam agreed to pay anything? Beaver Dam will pay. Okay, it. then I think we should. Mm -hmm. well, is that what you're? Well, we're, we're hoping to get the county involved in paying something. Yeah. Because this, this ordinance is from 1991. Well, this is. Who's paying what? So we can have our contract and said they want to start off, which would get all this going. Yeah, I wish I had But uh, Mark, I have two things. We made the fight with it again. And I said, Jennifer, another notice said that I was going to try to get everybody to tell me what they would agree to do. And then I'll get back with her and we'll get our contract done. We don't know what the county's going to do yet, though. Well, I talked with Joey. Exactly. Exactly. I'll see them. Yeah. To do so. And she was going to see David. Yeah. She said she had a meeting with him. She said, I'll talk to him. I said, yeah. I what had happened was we were supposed to have had David come over and he asked for a oh, 911, Charlie, mm -hmm. to come over in his place. And Charlie didn't come. And then whatever I kind of heard the other day is he didn't know Charlie didn't come. So he thought he did. <laughs> Right. He thought he didn't need to get back with me on anything because he thought Charlie was doing it. So uh, maybe after yesterday. Well, if we, I think we need to move on this myself. The, the comprehensive plan they're talking about, uh, you want to explain what the comprehensive plan is? Well, if you have your comprehensive plan, is a, it's a notebook that tells you what you want in your county. And it tells you what the counties around you are doing and how your road structures are, transportation is, what kind of industry you've had come in, any kind of updates you've had with your school systems, everything that would make a business want to come in. Broadband expansion. Broadband, right. exactly. We, we have the only exit in the county. Interstate, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that most, yeah. yes. So, <laughs> yeah, your census, as far as your growth over the years, you know, yeah. tells you that for the last 10 years, how you've updated, not ours. Uh, your planning is only has to and the county needs to do that every five years. We have to have our comprehensive plan update. Yeah. It is time for it to be updated. Ours hasn't really been anything but a light update with the least amount that you could do with each city. Our yeah. Beaverdale paying a portion of it for the last, since 91, I guess, wow. since it started. So I said now it's time for the whole thing to be redone. It's so outdated. Well, it we is. Had, and we had a meeting with Grad, and, and, and they did present a couple different proposals. But we felt it's about twenty five, I think. Twenty five to, to do what we yeah. need to do. And that includes yeah. both the comprehensive plan and the Well, the, the rest of it would be just us oh, identifying what we want to do and then passing it. But yeah. we can't do that new zoning part until we get this plan updated and ready. That's right. Yeah. So industry, industry right. coming in, yeah. well, that was one of the first things they would want to see so, is right. what is your comprehensive plan. Yes, and and a zoning plan. Right. Yeah. Also uh, I'm based sorry, I on that probably yeah. I should have all along as planning and zoning administrator instead of just giving the county a copy of it which i was required to do uh so instead of just giving them a copy of it stuff so i should ask them to be helping with it all along because it includes all the county as well have you approached oceda about yes using some of their funds towards it because yes, they, 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 go directly and, to they know that it needs to be done and they're willing to help but what it is is that they don't know whether their portion of money would be what uh and David Johnston would consider his portion of money because their money comes from the fiscal board. So right now, that's trying to figure out if we're going to have, we can get a three-way split or a four-way split on it. But right now, you all are looking at obligating Hartford to no more than 12.5. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I don't think we need to move on it. 
just yeah. too fun to do. Because it does, it is, it is a bit of a drawn out process because you have to have several meetings and you have to have yeah. some, you have to have things to pass. But again, if we can get this under a conditional with the idea of this is going to, this go is going to, ha- yeah, I think it'll benefit the city as a whole. And then right. that would, that would give them enough confidence to right. yeah. pull the trigger on it because they're, they got, he got, he's ready as you seen him yesterday. Right. Yeah. But I, you know, I need to know it's a big deal. It draws a lot of attention. Just yesterday, just this week, we had the, the Travel Channel down at our place, and they're doing a whole pilot, a, a new show, based on the ind- just this industry itself. It, the, I go to these meetings all the time. Through the department, I'll be in one Tuesday in Frankfurt for Department of Agriculture with with the, uh, Congressman Comer and. Uh, so it's, it, it, it is a big deal. It's not going away. It's going to keep getting bigger. Regardless, if five years down the road a medical uh, marijuana started coming in, that won't affect the hemp industry at all yeah. because two different it's two different plants. things. It's two different plants. That, that, uh, and uh, California has had a, a, a medical program for a decade now. And because of the Ag Bill, they are growing hemp this year, it's several tens of thousands of acres of it. And they already have medical because hemp can cross state lines because there's no THC in it. It's, it's, uh, and it's it grows a big very industry. well in Kentucky. Yeah, it does. It used <laughs> well, to be the number one crop. crop. It used to be the number yeah. one crop in Kentucky. And, oh, and, and R&D is going on down at Murray State University. I was just there this morning talking to the uh, director of uh, agriculture on, on that. We got a big deal with, uh, with Murray State. They were ground zero five years, years ago during the pilot program. And... Uh, they're, of course, they're excited about it, and that the alternative building for this investor was in Murray. And I'm trying, I'm like, give me one more chance to get in here because this is this is getting the foot in the door to something to get something else started right here. We got the only exit right here off the Natural mm-hmm. Parkway, and uh, I, I I wouldn't want to see it pass us by. No, I don't want to. It's a competitor to my company. You know. So, but I still want it here at Hartford. Well, I, I, that's why I told Joe yesterday <laughs> but, we want to try anyway we can yep. get you here, but yep. I can't just make it happen. So that's why I needed to get there to help right. Me, right, you know, figure it out. If we could do a zone right, right there, or if we could do the traditional under the fact that that the city and things have changed. That's what your comprehensive plan say. There's been unusual changes around you that have made this a little different. It has, so, exactly. Uh, the gentleman did tell me that even your product as it come in, you could schedule the different trucks. Oh, absolutely. Time. Yeah, and, and his scale. With anything you want us to you, work you, with. So that, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, if they can get in the parking lot around the state vehicles, it's already out there. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that same. <laughs> no, I know. It's too much yeah. that they bring it in. So, right, it's during harvest. Yeah. And then... I don't think it'll be that bad. Right. But that's not the point. It's still industrial when you get right down right. to it. So I couldn't okay. do anything with it. Like I make thing. a motion. So we have Tara work with Nancy, and that we go ahead and commit to get her over there to grad to start the spot road. I second. Do you want to put a limit of up to $12,500 on the... Okay, up to twelve thousand five hundred. Just to In match case. Beaver, to match Beaver Dam's contribution. Like yeah. That. And then we'll just okay. tell Dave Johnson what we've done to him, and he'll be happy. Hopefully, there'll be three. Divide three yeah. ways, or right. maybe even four. Maybe even four. Yeah. Or so. I believe we can get it to the three, and then what you've allowed or something to put back to that would help with starting to rezone the whole thing, right. because that's going to, you know, uh, yeah. rezone is going to cost something. Well, and that would be so nice doing it. we could do that, and then he can tell him what we're doing, and we're trying to fast track the yes. and get it because going. On the phone with him. The new comprehensive and I think, you know, I think really and truly, Grad ought to be willing to move a little faster on this. I mean, the first meeting we had with them was they've when already, they've already got everything all ready. Mapped out. They just didn't know which one of the options we wanted to take. Okay. But and they've already got the other. Ready to they go. Know, they've told us what they're going to do. I don't yeah. know how far along. I don't think they probably well, got I, anything well, done yeah. until they know which one we were going to commit to. They have to have a contract, and that's what they yeah. told me to to go well, ahead because they don't want to do uh, things for the third option. If the only thing we're going to do is the first option, which is bare minimum. 
Do you have yeah. a first and a second on a motion to pay for updating the comprehensive plan with right. grad and a contribution from Car Hartford to match Beaver Dam up right. to twelve thousand five hundred? Right. Who's second? Thank you. I did. Okay. Team discussion. Yeah, I've got a request. Once okay. I can go, I'll quit and do it. You, you want them to vote first? Oh. Yeah, we did vote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. If you're in favor, then put Thank you. All right. Now, yeah. what's your suggestion? Okay. Now I have a request. Uh, in your water and sanitation, the uh, personnel that go around, if they know the anything that's going up, changing the water and changing, or 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 these trailers that are being pulled in and just plugged in and all that stuff. If you'd have to make a job down an average. Yeah, I've, I've, I've told them, but I will remind them again. <laughs> because uh, I drove around the other day and I'm thinking, who knew? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know if that's new or not. Is that old? Yeah. That'll <laughs> work too. Yeah, I don't, I can't tell. But I did ask the, the uh, water department about that and they said that they were going to do which that lady has stopped that in my face over and over. Could we take some real action against her with her little little, little mm -hmm. trailer sitting out there? Is that the one we were talking about? Mm -hmm. Where is that? She won't, she'll tell me. She'll I've heard beside all. his church. Oh, ain't no, ain't no kid. Oh, no. They are. That. That's all right. I thought they said, well, I drove by there and somebody was with me and they that? said, no. we got a trailer there. I said, well, I think it's part of this church. <laughs> Did you? you know, but I'm afraid right 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 No. <laughs> Try to get the mayor to put a private fence up. I'm going to have to buy it so I can get a private fence. Yeah, I'd see that have to go. And for the record, my church is not a Mexican church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of the color. It looked like it. <laughs> that was just an accident paint. It almost looked like your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Way bueno. Yeah. <laughs> so, we've got that to take care of. Get moving. All that. Now, okay. can, I, can I ask the question? Yeah. Now, will that, uh, when we do that zoning, will that take care of 69? You know where I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I think well, I mean... Our well, first focus once we redo the we we'll have to do the comprehensive plan first. Right. But when we do the when we do the zoning, we've already talked to Grad and our first primary focus is going to be along two thirty one and highway sixty nine, those corridors because yeah, that's thank the primary corridor. Yes. Yeah. We got good news today. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Um I don't know if I brought this up before. Out in uh, Iron Mountain Iron Mountain East, there is a uh, a little cul de sac called South Wind Court. Okay, right across from that is an alleyway that the city of Hartford owns. And what it was intended for was to eventually connect over to Poplar Springs Drive, which would give another way out of Iron Mountain coming down the old rail, Emory Woods Drive, is what it would give them a way out. Um, not, we're not doing anything with it. I don't think there's ever been any plans to connect that. Uh, Robbie Coppage lives right next to it, and he's asked if the city would close that, sell it, you know, by the legitimate means, uh, so that he could build, if he bought it, he could build a garage on that property. <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion in the past about whether or not you have access. There's only one way in and one way out right now mm -hmm. to that entire neighborhood. Um, at one time, there was uh, some issues on Iron Mountain Road, and Dad took off over the water tower down that basement just to get back to every woods, and, and not every vehicle could do that. You know, it, if you all decide you want to do that, it would have to be abandoned and closed, and it would probably have to be declared a surplus. And it had to be either auctioned off or had to take sealed uh, bids on the property or what. But I, I would encourage you, and not necessarily just saying that that particular avenue has to stay open, but 
you know, do, do keep in mind of when you close things, you're cutting off your access in case of emergencies and stuff of that nature. So. It would not be our property any longer, so there would be a garage in the middle of that property, so. Uh, it might stop some of the ATVs running back and forth up and down my driveway. But, you know. <laughs> would, uh, you know, I think what you have to consider would be is a possibility in the future that we would want to utilize that as an egress out of Fire Mountain, or if we're not, what's the use of hanging on to it? Where does it egress? I mean, where does it come out? It would come out of, you know, where Poplar Springs Road is? Yes. Okay. You know how it ends there? Behind Miss Sarah's house on over to the cottages. Huh? It goes at the end of Popular Springs beside Cindy and James's house. And it goes behind Miss Sarah Riley's. It goes on down yeah. to the cottages and turns. Uh, yeah. It would require... I know there's been trees fall down in that curve a lot. And people in back there are kind of stuck until the tree is moved. There's yeah. no other. Because I've always thought there's got to be another way out of this place. When you have emergency vehicles in, like for fires and stuff like that, really just one entrance. Yeah. Same, yeah, we ought to maybe consider opening another way out. Or access to the <laughs> parkway. Because <laughs> that's my backyard. <laughs> well, could you sell him half of that? And leave over half? No. You've got to sell it all. About all we own there is just enough for yeah. a two-way street. Right. That's about all we own. We're fine now. We own a lot of things. <laughs> On that property up there. Yeah, we need to do something right. about that. Yeah. Uh, we'd have to declare that. There's a sixth of an acre that adjoins David's lot there that uh, he would like to buy. We can't sell it to him unless we declare a surplus and go through the process of taking bids or auction, public auction. Whatever, so can't even put a house on it. Ain't wide it's, enough. It's about, <laughs> I, I forgot what it is. Like it's 60, 60 feet wide, but yeah. hundred. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. I kept it mowed, so give it to me now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Send us a bill. <laughs> hey, we talking about ten years though. <laughs> there we go. I've been mowing it for ten. Y'all think about the alleyway up on. South Wind, the thing about the property that uh, joins his parking lot. Um, I'm looking for volunteers. I need volunteers for a someone to serve on the planning and zoning board, which meets once a month. And uh, I've got, there's one on there now, but she's retiring and she's going to resign from the position, so I need somebody. And I, I tell you folks, I just need help finding volunteers to fill those positions. So if you've got somebody that you can recommend that would serve on the planning and zoning, uh, I would very much welcome that. Also, too, I'd like to have some somebody step up to my door and say, I'd like to be the chairperson for the Harvest Fest, you know. <laughs> uh, if you know somebody that would be a good prospect for that position, the chairperson, uh, they don't have to do, I mean, all they have to do is just basically coordinate the work of probably half a dozen others. Uh, I had spoken to Annie, Kenny's wife, and uh, She's, she is just terribly busy, and, you know, I was imposing on her to even consider it, but she is calling the people who can do some of the other jobs, but she can't, she ain't got the time to coordinate it, and so I'm looking for someone just to coordinate that activity, and I need to get on it pretty quick, because... Harvest will be here before months, we know it. Six months, right be long. So if you think of anybody that would like to serve on the planning and zoning or could be 
cajoled into serving on the planning and zoning and uh, harvest this may be easier than planning it so. <laughs> well nobody likes it I think, I think, what, I like sca- it fine. I think what scares people is the eight hours of training yeah you have to have yeah, yeah and that's you can what, tell what we just talked about right here that they need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there's a lot involved. Yeah, there is. Okay. Um, anyway, I would open up the floor for any other topics that anyone wishes to discuss, and I bring up for our consideration. Anybody have anything? I do need to go into. Yeah. If not, then I'll entertain a motion. We go into closed session. Yes. <laughs> okay. I see David there. Is there a second, I second. to that? No, okay. All in favor of going into closed session? Okay. Thank you. There won't be anything else. No decision.